time for a shop tour. This is where I live. I'm a rancher and a carpenter. Hoping to be more of a cabinet maker in the future. So, corrals. I live in a in a valley or at the edge of a valley. So the shop was built in 2008-2009. It's a 40 by 80 with a uh, with a 20 foot lean to off of the side open to the east over open to this direction here and i had originally when i built this thing was living in this it was a 16 by 40 living quarters and that was the entrance into there now it's just uh this wood storage in here so then here's the entrance into the main shop Just about winter time, so the tractors have to unfortunately be stuck in here now. And then this is where I have mounted my uh, dust collector now. Just it's out, out of the shop to cut down a noise. It's still too loud. I'm, I'm, I want to try hanging a uh, a rubber floor mat in front of it to try to see if that absorbs the sound. And then until it gets to about minus 10 out or so, I just pipe out the, uh, the fine dust outside. It doesn't seem to cool it down very much. So in my last video, I showed the tool trailer when i am got some time off, especially in the winter time. A lot of those tools come off. And then they come into this area here. And this is my wood shop. This area right here would be about... 32 by 20, something like that. And then a big old outfeed table with my table saws. And it's kind of an awkward layout thanks to being a living quarter. So this, the wall was right where the LVL beam was. And then the living room, dining table, and there was my kitchen. And then over here was the bathroom. I would, if I could do it again, that bathroom would be off the side so it wouldn't waste so much space, but not a big deal. And then the bedroom is now wood storage, which as you can see, I am ready for winter. And then up, upstairs of the living quarters was just a big storage room. Uh, and then an office laundry room over onto that side. I had a spiral staircase that went from down there and up to there. And then now I've taken that out because packing heavy furniture upstairs is not fun. And I did the J Bates thing. I see lots of guys do it now on YouTube where you just take a, a winch and attach it to a track or whatever and this thing will drop down and then I can carry stuff up there. And this is kind of like a little prep room storage area. And then the, that area over there where the office was is now like a 16 by 16 spray room, which will be nice. I still got to get filters and stuff set up for it. So I guess to start the shop tour, we'll go counterclockwise. So we got just in the corner here, I hang up my tracks. I have a Craig track saw that I keep in the trailer. It wasn't overly accurate to start with and now that I've taken it onto the job site, it, it gets abused a little bit so it's not straight. So I, I went and bought a Festool track which is a little nicer and I treat this thing like glass, so hopefully it will always be bang on accurate for me. And then hang up my bits there. Well, the, the kitchen got converted into a miter saw station. It works, it's a little tight, but it's fine. And then I got a little bump out into the bathroom, basically, that hangs over the toilet. So that all that dust blows into there and with the... Uh, a four inch line opened up there. I mean, it doesn't collect the dust as you can see, but at least the, the stuff that gets into the air is sucked up perfectly fine. Like I can cut Baltic birch plywood at this all day and not have a stuffed up nose the next morning. And then not much for tools in these things, just drawer slides and stuff like that. And I got down the walls, some jigs for making chairs, the Lee dovetail jig, really nice jig. I have to read the manual every time I use it because I don't use it frequently enough. Mortiser, which basically once I started to buy dominoes, I have not touched this thing since. 
I'd sell it, but I'd never get my money out of it. So it may as well just sit there. Bosch router. Uh, it's made of wood, so pretty before long, the, it doesn't clamp down with the crap anymore. And then you got to sit there and mess around with it and try to make these things work a little bit better. It's it's not a great tape, but it's it was cheap. Everyone's got one of these things. That's a really good bang for your buck, that tool. They got a Laguna 14BX. You can put a three quarter inch blade in there. It's nice. It's a really nice bandsaw. Radio, a couple, uh, ones for dados and ones for normal cross cutting. Got a Laguna 16 inch with the spiral cutter heads. And then I got the King 8 inch. It came with straight knives, but I quickly found out how much it sucks to exchange knives. So now it's got a cutter, a uh, spiral cutter head in it. The clamp rack above that. Uh, let's see here. We got the 1938 drum sander. Nice unit. Just a smaller, cheaper bandsaw that I do curves with and uh, and just little off cuts while I'm assembling. Sometimes the dominoes are too long or something like that, so you can quickly cut things off. I usually don't even bother hooking it up to the dust collection. Oh yeah, and the 14BX runs that three quarter blade all the time now. I, I, changing bandsaw blades is a way too time consuming. Pain in the butt. Cheap drill press, because that thing never gets used. Very rarely do I ever need one. I just got this this fall. It's kind of scary to be honest. There's a go. It's going really fast, and there's a lot of power there. You got to make damn sure that you're feeding material onto it properly, or it will leave your hands. And then there's just some storage stuff there. A couple packouts filled with everything: drills, jigsaws, oscillating tools, nailers, trim routers. Uh, let's see. On this one, I've got. Dominoes and some Zeta P2 accessories. Uh, the Festool vacuum, the CT26, a couple of the good sanders, the Delta, and the six inch ETSEC, and the Domino. And then the, so then it's on to the out, outfeed table, the main work table. Just busy getting a few more chairs done for the family. Should be the last of them now. And then we got just an assortment of uh, hand sanding stuff and some clamps. And we got the Domino 700 here. I bought that first thinking it would be all I need. And yeah, you can use it for everything with that little Seneca adapter, but it's a big clunky unit to be trying to handle for cabinet work a lot of times. And then we just got more Zeta P2 stuff. And we got Domino's for the 500. For the 700 and then more Zeta P2 stuff and we got the uh, I don't even know what you want to call that something German gibberish for the track it's for you can set angles to it or get a nice square cut off of something it's accurate wouldn't expect anything else festival and more Zeta P2 stuff. There's the beauty right there. What a wonderful unit for cabinetry. Pretty handy. And then we got all the uh, domino connectors for this 5N700. I think that's an empty drawer. Clamps. Just some screws. This is basically just used for Z clips now. And then we got the old Porta cable. Dovetail jig. If I got to batch out a bunch of drawer parts, this is the one I'd probably use. It says you'd, you'd set it so it cuts both pieces at the same time. Nice simple dovetails. And then I got a router table attached on the side of the table saw. It's one of those three and a quarter Tritons. It's not the greatest router, but it's just convenient how everything's right there. You don't, all you got to do is buy a nice plate for it through Craig. And then we just got some router accessories in there. And then 
This I, uh, I sold one of my good horses for, and I bought an industrial one. I, everything I read said the professional was going to be just fine for me, but that's, it's, I usually end up regretting just not spending the money and getting the best. And I, this is nice. It's, everything's just a little bit bigger, and it's heavy. I like that it's heavy. It just makes it a lot more stable. This is the old girl. It was a king cabinet saw. It was a good saw too, just didn't have a very good fence. I did not trust that fence at all. And then the dust collection, it'll be whichever table saw I'm using, I just puts on to either one of them. And over here we got just some Craig cabinet stuff. There's your lead dovetail stuff and a Porter cable router that's just dedicated for it. And I got a Bosch router. It's usually the one I attach to the edge guide to to do grooves and stuff like that. And we just got finish nails, pocket screws, an empty drawer, and got screws, a bunch of the clamps for this system here. That's a nice system, I like that. All those holes, I put one hole in to try a Festool clamp and you just drop stuff down there. And here I've got the Milwaukee new 15 gauge finish nailer. It's really nice. I still got the old one that I'm trying to use and abuse so it conks and I can start taking that one on the job site. And we got just some more sandpaper stuff. This is that Bosch dual action, kind of like a Rotex, just for half the cost, but does the exact same thing. And we got sandpaper. Pencils and squares and tapes. And I think that's the wood shop.